Hello chapits! Today I've got some advice on if you want to be a board game reviewer. There are three things that you need. Number one, you need a big game collection. Um, check. Okay, number two, the second thing you need is you need to have a beard. Um, check. Okay, the third thing and most important thing that you need is you need to have a board game which is pimped to the max. Yeah? So like this one here, I've got the farmer and uh, there's the panda. The game is Takinoko! Yes! Once again, Antoine Bowser has taken a extravaganza into the Oriental, like he did with Hanabi, Takedo, and Ghost Stories. This is a, a colourful, light family game for up to four players, uh, in which there's a farmer who farms bamboo, and he's been given a present from the Emperor, thanking him for his wonderful work on his bamboo farms, and that present is a panda. Yes, yes, what a bad combination. It's like uh, mixing martini and orange juice and milk together to make a cocktail of some sort. It's just a bad combination. <laughs> but is, is this a good game? Let's take a closer look. So what will you be doing in this beautiful game? Well, you'll be having objective cards which give you points which will help you win the game. You'll either be putting pieces of plots of land in certain formations to get points. You'll be moving the panda around and making them eat certain types of bamboo to get points. Or you'll be moving the farmer around and making him grow bamboo to certain heights to get points as well. And all this will be done with two actions per turn. The setup of the game is you place the water tile in the middle of the table along with the farmer and the panda and place them on top like so. The rest of the tiles you make a nice big stack of. You get the dice out ready, you don't need it for the first round but the second round you will need it. You have the Emperor's Favour card, you separate this from the other cards. You're going to need this for the player who finishes all their objectives first. Then you get the three sets of objective cards and shuffle them into three individual piles and then all the improvement tokens we place ready on the table as well. Everything else you can leave nicely in the box because the box holds everything perfectly. It's a beautiful insert. Then each player will have their individual playmat like so and two tokens because you have two actions per turn and then they will each be dealt a card from each of the objectives, so one plot, one panda, and one farmer. The player mat that you have is not essential, but you can use it. It's a nice easy reference of the what actions you can do with the dice. It also has these five actions that you can do, so you can show players what you've done or what you're planning to do to keep a nice record. It also has a nice area for you to store any irrigation channels that you've set up any improvement tokens, and of course, any bamboo that the panda is eaten. We also use ours to display our point cards when we finish our points from our objectives. So what are the five actions that a player can do on their turn? The first action you can do is, you can create a new plot. You draw three plot tiles from the deck, and then you look at them, you choose the one that you wish to use, and then you place the other two at the back of the deck. With your chosen plot tile, you will add it to the board. In this case, next to the water tile at the beginning of the game. When one face of your plot is touching the water tile and you have a joint there, this tile is then considered irrigated, which means that bamboo will grow of its own accord. You will take a bamboo of the same colour as the tile and place it upon. Later on in the game, as you place more tiles and you verify if they are irrigated, you place another bamboo. But 
Later on in the game, you will not be able to place tiles like so. Tiles will have to place two faces of other tiles, unless they are touching the water tile, and then they only have to touch one. In this case, the pink here is not touching any water whatsoever, so therefore this is not considered irrigated, and therefore bamboo cannot grow. But later on in the game, you can lay some irrigation channels, and as soon as one of these is touching, it is irrigated. Some of the tiles have this irrigation sign on it, which means it doesn't have to be touching water to have bamboo growing. The second action you can do is you could take an irrigation channel and put it in your reserve or add in it directly to the board. Now with the irrigation it doesn't cost you any actions to add them onto the board so on your turn you could do two other actions and then decide that you're going to add some irrigation channels and as soon as you do if it irrigates an unirrigated tile plot then bamboo will instantly grow. The third action you can do is you could move the farmer. You will get to move the farmer in a straight line as long as the hexagon faces are aligned. So in this case, if the farmer was here, he could move to this yellow tile. Or if the farmer was here, he could move to this green or this yellow or back to the water tile. Straight line. He could not move to this yellow tile because there is a space in between. Okay. Once a farmer has arrived on a tile that they wish to arrive on, so say he started on this green tile, he would move here. He will start working. And when he works, if the tile is irrigated and there's bamboo or there's no bamboo, the bamboo will grow one. Any tiles which are adjacent, which are the same color and irrigated, will also grow one. But as you can see, this is adjacent, it's the same color, but it is not irrigated, so nothing grows. This one over here is irrigated, but it's too far away because it's not adjacent to where the farmer is, so that one does not grow. Therefore, the green and the green do not grow because they're green. The fourth action you can do is you can move the panda. The panda walks in straight lines like the farmer. So in this case, he could either go to the green tile or the green and the pink or the green there, the yellow, the green or the yellow there, but he could never arrive at these two or these two because the line is not straight. When he arrives at the location that you wish him to arrive, he eats one of the bamboos which is on that tile, unless it is a tile with this sanctuary marked on it. It's a panda with a red cross on it. If he arrives there, he would not be able to eat any bamboo. But the bamboo that he does eat, you put in his stomach. The fifth action you can do is you can take another objective card into your hand, either one of the plot cards, one of the panda cards, or one of the farmer cards. There are a few exceptions to the rules. Number one, you're not allowed to have more than five cards in your hand at a time. Number two, you are not allowed to take the same action twice on a turn, unless you've rolled the weather dice and the weather dice has told you to do so. Let's take a look at the weather dice. Once all players have had one turn each, that's when you'll introduce the weather dice. At the beginning of every turn from now on, you roll the weather dice before you take your two actions. And whatever the result is, you have to do. Okay, so for instance, when it is sunny days, sweeping the clouds up, it means that you can do three actions. You get an extra action, so you can do your normal two, and I normally use the dice as to mark my third action, like so. Bonus, that is. You can have rainy days, though. And what that means is you can choose any of the spaces which is irrigated and you can say, okay, the bamboo is going to grow here. Okay, simple as that. I could not say that it's raining here because it's not irrigated, so therefore bamboo could not grow. We then have, we have a storm, okay? The storm scares the panda. So wherever the panda is, you can just move them to any tile. They don't have to be in alignment to where the panda is. I could just move the panda there and eat that pink bamboo instantly because he's scared and when pandas are scared, they get hungry. We could have a windy day. A windy day lets you take the same action twice. It's not necessary, you don't have to, but you can say, yeah, I'm gonna take two uh, irrigation channels. 
Then we have cloudy days. Cloudy days will let you take one of the three different types of tokens as long as there are some left. These tokens, as you can see, match some of the ones that are printed on the tiles, the plot tiles. And you can either put them in your reserve or you can use them immediately. If you use them immediately or whenever you use them, you need to place them onto a tile, a plot tile which doesn't already have an icon on it and has no bamboo growing. So I could put it there, I could put it there, and I could put it there. Now we've already explained irrigation. What that means is basically bamboo will instantly grow. It doesn't have to have the irrigation channel next to it. That's the sanctuary, which means that if there's any bamboo there, the panda cannot eat it. But one thing we haven't explained is this one. This is fertile land. So whenever bamboo grows, so let's say it rained on this pink tile here, it wouldn't just grow one, it would grow two. Or, for instance, this green one here, it would grow two. And bamboo will always grow to a maximum of four high. It will not grow any bigger than that. And then last but not least, there's a question mark. You can choose whichever of these sides that you wish to use. And then as I said, you take your turns as normal. The game will keep going until someone reaches the objective level. That is the number of objectives completed by depending on how many players there are. So in a two player game, it's nine objectives. In a three player game, it's eight objectives. And in a four player game, it is seven objectives. The player that has completed the level of objectives will receive the Emperor's Blessing, which is this card here, and they get a bonus of two points. All the other players will get one turn each before you count up all your points on all your objective cards and decide, well you won't decide, but the points will decide who the winner is. Takinoko is a beautiful board game that beautiful families should play beautifully. This game just shines brilliant. Everything about this game is beautiful. The artwork, the components, uh, the, the mechanisms and the gameplay are all beautiful and wonderful to experience. But does that make it a good game? Well personally for me, no it doesn't make it a good game. A tale my big bugbear with this game is the amount of luck involved in this game. You, you can't play this game seriously. You have to play it with the light air of, well, this is just for fun. And that's what this game is. This game is fun. But if you try to play competitively, you're going to be disappointed. Okay? For example, in my experience of playing this game over 20, 30 times that I've played it, the winner has always been the lucky one. For example, my daughter has won this game with a strategy called the Panda Strategy. She would pick up nothing but Panda objective cards. And then she'd go and send the Panda off to eat bamboo. And the first time she tried this, she won the game. Why? Luck. Luck, 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 luck. The next time she tried to do it, it didn't work. And the time after that, it didn't work. Did I change my strategy? No, I didn't change my strategy. Um, there has been a time when I have won the game because most of the times that I rolled the dice, I rolled a sum, which is three actions per turn. Or I rolled the question mark, which means that I changed it to a sum. So I had three actions per turn. And so I won the game by having more actions than everybody else in the game. And the last time I played, and I won, I was lucky enough to draw every single card as a pink card. Now in the game, green is the common, so there's more green tiles in the green deck. There is more green bamboo, there is more green uh, objective cards. And so that means that the, the prices, the points that you get on these objective cards are lower than what they are on a yellow, which is common. And, and then the pink is the rare. And so the prices, the points on the pink are higher. The last game I played, every card that I picked up, every objective that I got was a pink card. Eat pink bamboo, make these tiles into a pink land, and then get the farmer to grow pink bamboo this high. And I won the game. 
because of luck. And all those times that I lost the game, I noticed that other people had had the luck. So there was no strategy. There was no kind of, I know what, I'm going to move the panda over here because I can see that you're going to try and eat this kind of bamboo to finish your objective. I know you're after green bamboo. You can't screw over other players playing this game. You can try and you'll lose because you'll put yourself out. You will just naturally screw players over by just trying to accomplish your objectives. Negatives out of the way, let's move on to the positives. The rule book is beautifully short and explains everything wonderfully. And as you can see, uh, this one comes in French and in English. I love it when a game comes in two different languages, especially because um, I speak one and not the other. The problem with the rules is they are a little vague and so they had to print out uh, an etera uh, to clarify things. I mean, when I read the rules I understood everything quite easily, which makes a change because normally when I read rules I muck up lots of stuff. The components. As you can see, the panda is beautiful. The tiles and the artwork is beautiful. Everything is easy to understand. Um, you'll, you'll learn the game very, very quickly. And it does play about in 45 minutes. Um, the problems that I do have with the components are like the, the, the player tokens. They've got different patterns on them. Some of them are faded. And they're supposed to be matched with the, the backs of the cards, but yeah, why bother? And again, the dice, I'm not too keen on the quality of the uh, wooden dice. It feels very light. The bamboo is beautiful. Um, although occasionally the, some of the pieces when you connect them get stuck. Yeah, very nice, very nice. And that, the pièce de résistance, the, the inside box, oh, it's wonderful. Card art, beautiful. Card quality, beautiful. Not too small cards, not too big. Everything is really nice. So, really nice components and pieces. And the mechanics are really great. Players are kind of like playing gods. Um, controlling the land, they're building the land, and they're also controlling the elements by making bamboo grow here, and then the weather to change things around. And then they're also having this tug of war with these these two characters, you know, pull them this way, and then the other player pulls them that way. It kind of makes me feel like the Greek gods in Clash of the Titans, they have this great control. And then I got to thinking, wouldn't that make a great game as well? Take this mechanic and put it into a Clash of the Titans game where players are gods, they have five, maybe five objectives that they, they have to complete three of and they have these throughout the game and you're building up the land and you're creating plants and then you have these characters which you will pull back and forth, you know, a, a, a demigod, a monster, a, an animal and you know you complete three of these objectives you win the game and the objectives could be simple things like you've got to kill that monster or you've got to have 17 of a ivy growing on 17 different terrains or maybe turn most of the terrain into a desert or even maybe kill the animal by making them eat too many bananas or something like that this is a great mechanic, but the theme just seems wishy-washy. Antoine Bowser has these fantastic ideas for mechanics, and then the theme just seems... It's like a cocktail that he's made. You know, he's got, oh yeah, I've got some martini, and I've got some coke, and I've got some milk, and I've got some um, syrup. Hey, whoa! It just... Seven Wonders feels like this. And Hanabi feels like this. Although Dr. Shark, it has the best connectability out of all of his games, but he did have help with that. This is a family game though. I shouldn't be ratting on. Antoine Bowser produces some really good, popular games. And I shouldn't really rat him out for his connection of theme and mechanics. This, this theme is original. Nobody's done a game about growing bamboo and pandas eating bamboo, which is great. Um, it's a light family game, there's no violence, you're growing stuff, you're creating a world. It's really light and fun. Although there is all this luck thrown in, um, so daddy won't always win, just like in all the TV commercials. And then everyone laughs at the table. I sucked your battleship. Yeah, um, a great light family game, uh, still in my connection, 
because I do enjoy it uh, because it's just so beautiful and it's easy to play and I've gone past the point of caring if I win or lose anymore and it's nice that kids can beat their parents without their parents having to play lightly or cheat or you know it's just really nice kind of family game because the winner could be anybody um, hopefully with the new Chibi's expansion coming out soon this game will ele elevate a bit more in my personal opinion but at the moment I'd only give it a 7.8 out of 10 um, which is not too bad it is a light family game plays quickly plays easily and is totally lucky and but so is Uno And once one of these has touching an unirrigated area, wrong colour, idiot, then it is considered idiot. <laughs>